What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets radio. Thank you to everybody joining us today in the live stream. We definitely appreciate all the support. Thank you to Romeo, who actually co-hosted with me today. Uh, he did an excellent job doing all my nonsense. Romeo is the person that does all our video edits, helped us with our new intro. So uh, please make sure you give him a follow. Um, what I don't know really what you want me to say here. 45-17, ass beating by the Bills. You know, the Jets, you know, good teams find a way to win. Bad teams find a way to lose. The Jets are a bad team. They're not improving pretty much at all. They're going backwards in many aspects. You know, the Bills were coming off a disappointing loss. So you knew you were going to get their best effort. But the Jets got an extended break playing on Thursday night. So you thought you'd see a lot more. You thought you'd see some adjustments. And you didn't really see any of it. So on offense, Mike White was terrible. He uh, Four interceptions. He should have been benched. I have no idea why he doesn't. Uh, Greg Van Roten, not good. I don't know what it takes for a player to get benched on the New York Jets. I, I have no idea what the accountability is or what the culture is, but we never see it. Um, offensive line was very inconsistent. The pass catchers, I mean, Corey Davis made an excellent catch, catch and then fumbled right before half, which completely turned the tide of the game. So it's just like every facet of the team contributed in terms of helping this be a enormous just blowout loss. Another one. So Michael Carter as a running back did some really good things. He's obviously going to be a bell cow back going forward. Tevin Coleman did his normal thing. Ty Johnson showed some really good things. Elijah Moore scored a touchdown late, which was nice. But the offense was terrible, man. Like, they had no rhyme or reason. Mike White isn't good. He gets his footwork in the pockets questionable. He's like a statue back there. Doesn't really move around. Was staring at receivers. And again, I understand it was, a, you know, one of the best defenses of football he faced. But... I thought they'd be competitive, and they weren't. And it's disappointing. I thought they'd be better prepared, be a little more explosive, just, just be more well-versed in what the offense should be. And now Mike White got hurt as well, so we'll see what happens there. They brought in Joe Flacco way too late, but who cares at that point? Offensive line rem remains just to be a work in progress. I don't even know what – like, you don't even know what they're being coached at this point. Like, I don't understand it. And then you had a, a, you had a point in time in the game where they had fourth and one – which to kick a field goal, or no, actually, I'm sorry, fourth and one, they were going for it, and they got a delay a game. I don't know why Sal didn't call timeout. They asked him about it in the press conference. He couldn't even explain it. And you have a time management coach. Like, dude, I don't, like, I just don't understand what they're doing. They come off so unprepared. They're getting thoroughly outcoached. You question effort at times, which isn't good. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, once again, they got exposed in the passing game. Josh Allen threw for 366 yards, maybe more than that. Um, you know, the defensive line, they had a couple sacks early, but they, they just couldn't do anything, man. Like, it's just, they look like, you know, Brandon Eccles had some problems with Diggs. He got hurt. Gidry got roasted. He got no help. The Jets have two. They have Ashton Davis and whatever safety they want next to him. They're getting exposed. The linebackers get exposed. It's just, it's a mess everywhere. It just is. I, I don't know, like, I, people want me to give some kind of, like, really, like, detailed, like, you know, analysis here. I thought both sides of the football, they sucked. They didn't play well. They just were, it just, you expect better, you don't see it, and then you get, it's just demoralizing to watch. It was, I think, 17-3 at halftime in a matter of moments in the third quarter. I think it was like, what, in like a matter of like nine minutes, they scored like 20 points, and the game was long over. It was gone. So, I don't know what to say. They, you know, you have more questions than answers once again. They look like shit, and now you're like, okay, you're going to play the Dolphins. Who's going to be the quarterback? To me, I wouldn't be surprised they start Flacco. They say Mike White's hurt, Zach Wilson's hurt, and they play Flacco. I don't even care at this point. I, I don't I don't really understand what they're doing on offense. I have no idea what they're doing on defense. And now it's like you wonder, as the season progresses, this rebuilding year, I, my biggest problem with this team, to be completely honest with everybody, is I think they accept losing, they justify losing, and they're finding way too many excuses, and nobody's being held accountable. And that culture that's being established is not good. Everybody is way too comfortable and there's no accountability. And the symbol of New York Jets is that thing you see on Twitter where the, where the, where the dog is sitting around fire and they're saying everything is fine. That's the Jets. Terrible.